video, we're going to talk about how to graph rational functions. So what a rational function is, or a rational equation, is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. And so graphing these functions, uh, there's a series of steps that we're going to go through to find the different key pieces in these functions. And then at the end, we'll actually graph it. So the goal is to try to do this without using a graphing calculator or Desmos or something like that, using just our algebra knowledge to figure this out. So here's a practice problem. It's x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x squared plus 8x plus 7. And we're going to figure out how to graph this without using any sort of technology. So uh, first thing we should probably do is factor the top and bottom. We're going to need to know the factors of this. So on top, it's going to be x minus 3, x plus 1. And on bottom, it's going to be x plus 7, x plus 1. So the first thing that we're going to look at is called a hole in the graph. And a hole occurs when there's a common factor in both the numerator and denominator. So that means that this x plus 1, those will essentially cancel out. And when those cancel out, that creates a hole in the graph. So the hole is whatever makes the top and bottom zero at the same time. The hole is when at x equals negative 1. Negative 1 would make that uh, a hole. And so basically what it is is the function is going to happen everywhere around there. You're just going to have an open circle because you can't divide by 0. That's why there's a hole in the graph. Because if you put negative 1 in there, you'd be dividing by 0. Even though you can cancel out the x plus 1s, with the original function, you'd still be dividing by 0 if you put negative 1 in. Now to figure out how far up and down on the graph it is, because we know that x value is going to be negative 1, but we don't know how far up and down that's going to be, we're going to plug negative 1 into what's left over. So for the y-coordinate of our hole, we're going to plug in negative 1 in for x. So negative 1 minus 3 on top and negative 1 plus 7 on bottom. That's what's left over after I cancel out the x plus 1. And this becomes negative 4 over 6. So negative 4 over 6 will reduce to negative 2 thirds. So our hole is located at negative 1 comma negative 2 thirds. That's going to be the location of the hole in the graph. OK. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is, is the vertical asymptote. And this is where uh, what makes the denominator equal to 0, but it's not a hole. So I'm going to cross out the whole stuff because we're not dealing with that. And we're looking for when is the denominator 0. And that's going to be x equals negative 7. And once again, we can't divide by 0. And so what happens on the graph is it creates this vertical asymptote where the graph does some funky stuff at negative 7. And we'll take a look at what happens there in just a few moments. OK, next is a horizontal asymptote. And there are two different cases for horizontal asymptotes. The first case is if the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator. That's case number one. Then the horizontal asymptote will just be y equals 0. So what an example of this would be like y equals x plus 7 over x squared plus 3x minus 4 or something like that. The degree on top is first degree, and the degree on bottom is second degree. That's just the largest exponent on x. And so since the degree on top is smaller, the horizontal asymptote will be at y equals 0. This has to do with n behavior. If, you, if you're familiar with n behavior, you know that uh, as x is going to infinity, the bottom's getting much bigger, and the top is getting big, but not quite as big, so it's going to get really close to 0. The second case is if the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, then the horizontal asymptote is going to be the leading coefficient of the numerator over the leading coefficient of the denominator. So what does that mean? So in our example, they are the same degree on top and bottom. They're x squared. And so what you do is you take the leading coefficient, which in the top is 1, and in the bottom it's also 1. So let's say this was like 2x squared over 5x squared. It would be 2 over 5. But in this case, it's going to be y equals 1 over 1 or just y equals 1. So that's going to be our horizontal asymptote in this case. So 
So it, it might make sense for you to think, well, what if the top is bigger than the bottom? There will be no horizontal asymptote if the top is a bigger degree than the bottom. And I'm just talking degree, so not the leading coefficient, just the degree, which is the exponent power. So this is going to be our horizontal asymptote, y equals 1 for our problem. All right, uh, the next thing we're going to talk about are intercepts, y-intercepts, and x-intercepts. So y-intercepts is when x equals 0. And all you do is you plug in 0 for x. So you can cancel out the holes, or you can plug in 0 with the hole. It's not going to really affect much because it'll be the same on top and bottom. So I'll plug in 0 for x. it be 0 plus 1, and then 0 minus 3 on top. And then on bottom, it's 0 plus 1 times 0 plus 7 on bottom which gives me 1 times negative 3, and then 1 times 7 on bottom. So my y-intercept is when x equals 0, and y is going to be negative 3 sevenths. That's going to be my y-intercept. My x-intercept is when y equals 0. So what that looks like is if, if y equals 0, so this thing up here is 0, the only way for that to happen is if 0 is in the top. It's going to be 0 divided by something. Well, we're not going to worry about the x plus 1 because that's already dealing with the whole. So we know that when x minus 3 equals 0, that's going to be the x-intercept. So that happens when x equals 3. So our x-intercept is going to be 3, 0. We're going to graph that on our graph. All right, and then there's one last thing that we're going to talk about, and that's when is the graph positive and negative. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start by setting up just a number line to help us through this. And when this, when this graph will change from positive to negative will be when these factors on top and bottom occur. And they don't always change from positive to negative there, but, but that's when it will possibly change. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the zeros of each of those factors. So negative 7 will make the bottom 0. Negative 1 will make the top and bottom 0. That's the whole. And then positive 3 will make the top 0. So I'm just putting down the different zeros of the polynomial on top and bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick a number in this region over here. So anything smaller than negative 7, I'm going to plug in. So let's think about, let's, let's just do negative 8. That one will probably be easy. So if I do negative, and I'm going to plug it in to x plus 1. So negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. So I'm just going to write negative. Negative 8 minus 3 is also negative. Negative 8 plus 1 is still negative. And negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. That's also negative. And if we plug a bigger, like, or I guess a smaller number, so like negative 9, negative 10, negative 11, all those, it's, they're all still going to be negative. So if I have negative times negative on top, that's positive. Negative times negative on bottom, that's also positive. So this overall thing is going to be positive. That means the graph is going to be positive there. And I'll show you what that means in just a moment here when we actually graph it. Okay, let me clean some stuff up here. Okay, let's pick a number between negative 1 and negative 7. So I'll do negative 2. If I plug negative 2 into x plus 1, that's going to be negative. If I plug negative 2 into x minus 3, that's also negative. If I plug negative 2 into x plus 1, that's still negative. And negative 2 plus 7 is positive. So three negatives, two of them will cancel out, one of them won't. So this is going to be negative here. Let's look at a number between negative 1 and 3, and I'll kind of clear this off so I can keep doing what I've been doing. So 0 would make sense. That's an easy one. 0 plus 1 is positive. 0 minus 3, negative. 0 plus 1, positive, and 0 plus 7 is positive. So if we have one negative altogether, that's going to overall be negative. And then we'll test something in the last region which is uh, bigger than 3. So something bigger than 3, I would say maybe 4 or 5. So if I plug 4 in, 4 plus 1, positive. 4 minus 3, positive. 4 plus 1, positive. And 4 plus 7, 
positive. So overall, this region would also be positive. So that means the graph will only be negative between negative 7 and positive 3. Everywhere else, the graph will be positive. So let's take a look at what this looks like on the graph. All right, so let's graph it. I will use, let's use yellow, that'll pop a little bit. There's a hole at negative 1, comma, negative 2 thirds. So that's going to be somewhere right around here. I'll just put an open circle there. There's a vertical asymptote at negative 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're going to draw a vertical asymptote line, which means we're just going to do a dotted line. And this is going to be where the graph is going to approach, but it's not going to cross. It's not going to touch this vertical asymptote. Because remember, if it's negative 7, we'd be dividing by 0, and that's, that's not OK. There's a horizontal asymptote at 1. And so we'll draw a dotted line here. Now, horizontal, horizontal asymptotes, graphs can cross them. But what this is describing is what's happening on the end of the graph. So if at some point, you know, in, in this one, it won't cross the graph. But every once in a while, you'll graph one of these, and it'll cross the graph. And you'll think, why did that happen? Well, it's okay to cross it. It just can't, it'll approach it at the very end of the graph. It will never touch it at the end of the graph. Okay, y-intercept is 0, negative 3 sevenths. So let's see, that's a little less than a half. So something, ooh, I didn't want an open circle. Let me fix that. We'll do a closed circle there. 0, negative 3 sevenths. That's going to be our y-intercept. And then our x-intercept is going to be 3, 0, so somewhere over here. Okay, so what does this whole positive-negative business mean? Well, when it says positive, that means it is above the x-axis. Because positive values are above the x-axis and negative values are below the x-axis. We're not talking about the y's, we're talking about x's. I'm sorry, we're, we're talking about y's, yes. We're not talking about the x's. So we're dealing with above and below the x-axis. So that means that these two negatives here means the graph is going to be below the x-axis in that region. And then it's going to go above the x-axis once it gets past 3. And you can kind of see that's going to happen if we look at this. We know there's going to be a hole, so the graph's going to pass through here. And then it's going to go through the y-intercept. It's going to go through the x-intercept and keep going close to that horizontal asymptote, but never cross it. So there's going to be the graph there. And then if we continue going the other way, it's going to get close to this vertical asymptote, but then all of a sudden go zoop, way down. So the graph is going to look something like this. And does this follow what we predicted? It's below the x-axis between negative 7 and 3. And so between negative 7 and 3, that would be right here to here, those red two lines. And it's below the x-axis. That's negative. And then on the right of 3, it's positive, so it goes above the x-axis. And it's not getting more positive necessarily. It's just it's positive, so it's above 0. It's between 0 and 1, so it's going to look something like that. And then the last piece is... On the left of negative 7, it's going to be positive always. So I have a couple choices. It's either going to be in that little region or up in this region. Well, it can't be in this small region because eventually it'd have to go down below the x-axis and cross. So I'm not going to say it's there. So it's got to be, actually, I'll just undo here. There we go. So I'm just, I know it's going to be up in the upper left quadrant area of this. So I don't know exactly where it's going to be, and if I can't use technology and I don't really want to make a bunch of points, that's okay. I just know that it's going to be something like this, and we're trying to get a, a relatively accurate sketch. And so I know it's going to cross, or I'm sorry, not cross, but get close to both of those asymptote lines, but never quite touch them, so it's going to look something like that. So that's our final product. Uh, we've got our whole, our asymptotes, we've got our intercepts, and the graph looks wonderful.